Yeah. yeah. Well trained. I should have. Uh, let's look through the papers. Vicky Beach and Kevin Schofield with us once again. Um, let's kick off with the uh, Sunday Express, Vicky, should we? With a thousand primary schools without a single male member of staff. Yeah, it's very interesting. So. You Earlier we were talking about the, uh, the Royal Navy and that there's some jobs that women typically don't do. And this is really a kind of completely opposite scenario. So there's some statistics here from the Department of Education and they're saying that more than a thousand state primary schools in the UK actually have no male staff at all. So no, no teachers, no support staff, no administrative people and no maintenance people. Um, all of them are female. And so they're just pointing out that, that a quarter of a million children are taught uh, in a kind of female-only environment. Do, and also, do, does it matter? I don't really think it does, but I think diversity is important, and I think um, there's clearly an issue about attracting male primary school teachers to the role, and I think um, it's maybe similar with places like, you know, commanders in the Navy. I think when you get an environment that is so dominated by one gender, it can almost become then a cycle that self-fulfills. And they are male role models. Exactly, and I think I think kids, you know, they need diversity, they just yeah. need to see a balance. Because um, yeah. a, a lot of those kids, unfortunately, maybe don't have uh, any male role models at home, so... You'd hope that school might be able to provide a positive male role model for them, and if you've got more than a thousand, don't have any men at all. It's, um, yeah. it's incredible. It's, They're saying six to one. Worrying, six to one is the ratio of female teachers to male teachers in primary schools, and apparently that's actually a vast improvement. That's gone up three and a half thousand since 2010. So we are making progress. Problem, but yeah. I think it I is. Think yeah. Some men have been scared mm -hmm. off teaching in primary schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, I only had one in my primary school. There was only one. Yeah, we had we had two. Uh, I was only taught by one, Harry Barron. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Barron, if you're watching. Does that still strike fear into your heart? No, <laughs> it does. He was, you know, he was brilliant. And it was when I was second year juniors. I don't know what year it is now. It was, uh, but eight, eight to nine year old, and he was brilliant. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, but the rest were, were women, but I can't come because my mother was a primary school teacher, so... Mine too. So she go. taught me too. Oh, did she? <laughs> oh, no, my mother didn't teach me, <laughs> apart from at home. <laughs> um, this in the Mail on Sunday, Kevin, um, is it, can this be right? I read this with some scepticism just because it sort of beggars belief. To yeah, be it's, it's sort of page one, rule one of the uh, How to Do Politics handbook, you know, don't hold up Adolf Hitler as a positive role model and um, especially UKIP given their sort of mm. con many controversies in the past but I mean it's a s dramatic headline as you would expect but basically yeah. there's a guy called Bill uh, Etheridge um, who's an M MEP um, was given a seminar last week uh, in which he was sort of trying to coach UKIP candidates into um, how to sort of speak properly at political gatherings and he was holding up Adolf Hitler as someone who was um, uh, able to hold a crowd. Well, uh, magnetic and forceful public speak. Well, look, he's not wrong. It's just he's, so tasteless. Yeah, isn't it? it's so tasteless. tasteless. There are lots pretty, of people you can. He's still yeah. pretty toxic. So uh, yeah. as a, just a bit. <laughs> so um, it's and as I say, you kept given the many controversies we've had with various uh, extremely right wing mm. viewpoints held by many of their elected representatives, it's probably advisable to steer clear of any... Yeah, you'd think they'd chat. want to go out of their way. And I'm also slightly um, concerned because it says here that um, Nigel Farage may um, stand for Parliament in Kent, in Than itself, and um, lots of my relatives live down there on the coast, actually, um, in Canterbury and in Thanet, and I really hope he doesn't get in, but there is a real wave of... Uh, well, this is the last kind of, of publicity he needs. Really. Exactly, yeah. but, there, but there's still a lot of love for him down there, and I'm struck whenever I visit Kent. There's, well, there's a lot of good, um, good vibes about UKIP. It's, so. it's a, you know, I it's this democracy like that we live in. A lot, a lot of people agree with what they're with what they're saying. Mm. A lot of people don't, of course, but that's the. Mm. The joy of, of living in a yeah, and a they are polling very very well down there, and he'd be yeah, very careful are. not to stand somewhere unless he's got a great chance of. <laughs> because if he stands and doesn't get in, then the whole UKIP bubble bursts First. straight away. You know, really so, testing uh, it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, to the Sunday Express, um, a game to beat the blues. This is brilliant. So young people, as we know, spend hours glued to their smartphones, as do I, and I'm sure we all do. Guilty. Candy Crush fans here, <laughs> or Angry idea. Birds. Um, well, there's a, uh, a charity that's really going to harness that power of gaming for good. Because a lot of young people struggle with anxiety these days, and uh, a charity has invented a game, it's a smartphone app, that helps young people control their anxiety. So you wear a little it's wrist amazing. monitor. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It monitors your heart rate, and it, it gets you into different situations and has you imagine situations, and then teaches you how to control your breathing. And as you overcome the anxiety and slow your heart rate down, you get points. 
So uh, they've got about £200,000 funding from Google because it's such a great initiative. And uh, right. they're trialling it in September. But I think it's a great idea to take gaming and actually use it for you know, positive Good. benefits for mental health. Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a, a game called Monster Manor that you can download, which is for young children with type 1 diabetes, help them okay. monitor glucose levels, which huh. does the same. So it's the same sort of principle. Brilliant. That it's yeah. sort of and when you watch, technology. When so. you watch young kids playing on iPads, the games they play are really yeah. educational, but mm. also lots of fun. It's quite incredible. Mm. Yeah, it's great to things. cross over that. Yeah, have that yeah. 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 Well, cross Crossover is good, yeah. I think, and that sort of thing. Uh, my sticking with kids. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 this is going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. <laughs> Pupils will go on holiday in term time, <laughs> risk the fines, but do better. Yeah, well, this is um, uh, obviously it's a major concern for parents of kids who are at school. Um, they know the problems of trying to get, well, they can't get time off uh, out with term time and the massive cost of uh, going on holiday during uh, school holidays. But John Cosgrove, uh, head teacher at Christ the King Catholic Primary School in Reading, has done some research in which uh, he says proves that actually kids who go on holiday uh, during term time tend to do better than those, uh, <laughs> than those who don't, <laughs> incredibly. And actually, he actually makes a good point as well. He's written to uh, the new Education Secretary, Nicky Morgan, to ask her to reconsider, because obviously her predecessor, Michael Gove, was very strict on this. Massive fines being brought in now for parents who flaunt, uh, flout the rules. Um, but he's basically saying that a lot of these uh, kids um, won't be able to go on holiday at all exactly. because mm. the parents can't yeah. afford to go mm. during, during the, the holidays. Prices are so much higher, aren't they? It's they just, really take advantage of that, the holiday company. It's ridiculous. So he's saying, you know, you can maybe make it, not a sort of blanket, let everyone go when they want, but, you know, in exceptional circumstances. And he's saying it doesn't actually affect their schooling at all. But, as you say, very, very controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Or even if you just go in that last week before the summer holidays, I mean, does what it really affect it going their schooling? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. People yeah. are winding yeah. down anyway, aren't they? Exactly, Usually the yeah. curriculum's yeah. sort of less intense at that point. Well, I see that you, it's, well, this is one of these campaigns, isn't it, where I think until there is a resolution that parents are happy with, it's not going to stop. Well, yeah, and a, and a lot of parents will weigh it up. This is the fine, this is the cost of the holiday. I'll just take the fine. It still yeah, works It's probably cheaper. cheaper than going in Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It it's, um, yeah. it's not an easy solution. Lovely. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. Back with more papers in just a minute. Can you hear me at this stage? There we go. Um, I'm a bit intrigued, Vicky. I just think if my mobile should run out of juice, um, I need to, according to this, um, pee on it. This is amazing. Scientists. It'd <laughs> <have laughs> be novel. I'd Scientists have wipe made, a, it down made a breakthrough. It doesn't sound very pleasant to us, but um, if you live in a country where it's very difficult to get power, it's very remote. Um, scientists are trying to work on ways to power smartphones for safety and to help people communicate kind of in the middle of nowhere basically. And so they found a new way to charge your mobile phone and it is through human urine. What a pleasant thought. Um, and apparently according to this, uh, during, uh, during the kind of process of the urine breaking down and releasing carbon it says that um, one pint can give you 20 minutes charge on your uh, smartphone. Let's be honest, a pint <laughs> is quite a lot. I know. A well, pint is five pints is yes, the average Yes, the same five pints is the average day, and that would give you a full charge. But um, Five pints? <laughs> what? Five pints is what we pass in a day? Apparently so. Really? So you need to drink a lot of water? You need to drink a lot of water yeah. in order to charge exactly. your mobile phone. Okay. But it's uh, being hailed as a real breakthrough. The Bill Gates Charity Foundation has given them a lot of money, and they're hoping that it'll really help people in the developing yeah. world to, uh, to stay in communication when they're in desperate well, situations. Look, but I mean, we laugh about it because it does sound so extreme, but actually, if this were, I mean, what a, gr <laughs> what a great way of getting energy. Yes. Yeah. It's a bit like Castaway. Did you ever see that movie where he lives on the boat no. for months and months and months, and I think he manages to kind of purify water. Hanks? Yeah, I think yeah. so. All right. right. Maybe it was Castaway, one of, the, one of those kind of stranded type movies. But I mean, I would hate to be without my smartphone, so I think any, any breakthroughs are good. But it this, is. This might be a so bit far. basically, if you go on the trek, Vicky, take a bucket. <laughs> is, what we're, is what we're saying. And plenty of water. Love it. You're back in an hour. We look forward to that. Hopefully. Uh, let's get a quick check on the sport. Here's Tom.